In this video, we will look at the exponential function. Now, first, let's look at the equation. It would be y equals a times b to the power x minus p plus q. Now, when we start with the a and the b, they will determine the shape of the function. We'll look at that closely now. Then the q, this guy is very important. This is your horizontal asymptote. So if I have a Cartesian plane, and I have a horizontal line, y equals something that is your q and your horizontal asymptote. Now next, um, the q is also your vertical shift. So what this means is your q value, depending on whether it's positive, will shift your graph up, whether it's negative will shift your graph down. Okay, so let's see what we have. Let's get a Cartesian plane going for each of these functions. Now in the first case here, I have the equation. Let me write that down again, x minus p plus q. All right, so in the first case, we can have the b greater than 1, right, but not equal to, and the a greater than 0, okay? And then this function would have a shape where the arrow kind of goes toward the positive x side and positive y side. It just goes up and it never touches the asymptote there, the horizontal one. Now on the other hand, I could have the b greater than 1 still, but the a less than 0. So now this a is negative, so you actually have a negative function. And this type of guy is a reflection in the x-axis. It's a reflection of the original function in the x-axis. Okay, right, now we're on the other side. Now we're working with um, where the b is between 0 and 1. Now what does that mean? That's basically just a fraction. Just remember that. So the b is a fraction. Sometimes they can have y equals a half to the power x. Okay, that's the example. And now it looks to the other side. There you go. If the a is also positive. In the case where the a is negative and the b is still a fraction, so it's still between 0 and 1, it will once again be a reflection in the x-axis. Alright, so these are reflections of each other. Similarly, these are reflections. Now, if you look at the first and the third graph we drew, they are also reflections of each other. They are reflections in the y-axis. Just remember that, keep that in mind as well. Now, when we're talking about our, our graph, let's get a Cartesian plane and just draw a graph here. This graph will have a horizontal asymptote. We already said that. That will be y equals q. Now, if we talk about the domain of this guy, which is where on this function, where will this function be defined on the x-axis, or for which x values will this function be defined? And then it's all of them, right? Because it continues forever. So x will be an element of all the real numbers. But the range, so for which y values will this function be defined? You'll see if you go um, up and down on the y-axis, you'll see that this doesn't even go anywhere near the negative y-axis. So it only starts by that q value. It only starts by the horizontal asymptote. So in this case, we're going to say all the y values that are greater than the q, the horizontal asymptote, but it cannot touch, so it cannot be equal. Or in the case where you have a um, Cartesian plane and your function is the, it's got a negative value, then we'll say y will be less than q. So if q would be your horizontal asymptote there, it will only be defined for y functions less than that horizontal asymptote. Right, now let's look at an example. So I'm going to draw an exponential function here, and 
this guy has got y, it's an horizontal asymptote, equals to 4. And then you can see the shape is a positive shape. So if we go back to that shape, it's going to be where the b is greater than 1, so it's not a fraction, and the a is positive. Okay. They give us another point here. They say um, at this point we're going to have the value 2, 6 at that point. And they also say you are given a little help. y equals 2x minus p plus q will be the equation for this function. So what you need to find is p and q. Okay, so they help you a little. Now we see that Q, it's easy, Q is the horizontal asymptote, so Q is the Y value, so Y is equals to Q is equals to 4 is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, and then on the other side, um, we now need to find P. So I'm going to do, I'm going to work with the other point that I have, which is the point 2, 6. They only give me this one point and 0.26. So I'm going to have to work with 2, 6. I'm going to substitute in the value x is 2, y is 6. So y is 6, 2, x is also 2, minus p, plus the q is now 4. Okay, I take the 4 over to that side, it becomes negative. 6 minus 4 is 2, 2 to the power 2 minus p remains. Now this is something that's very important when it comes to the exponential function. You need to know that in equations, if I have 2 equals 2 to the power, let's say, x, then this 2 has most to a power 1 if there is no power. It's always 1, which tells me then that I can drop the bases and x will be equal to 1. Okay, so keep this in mind. Now let's go back to our example. In our example, we have bases 2 and that exponent is 2 minus 1 and that base is 1. So you're going to say, drop the bases, 1 equals 2 minus p. And if you um, take the 2 over to the other side and you make your p positive, you're going to see that your value of p is 1. Now I found p, I can substitute all of this back into my function, y equals 2 to the power, x we don't know, p is 1, so x minus 1, and q is a positive 4, so it's plus 4. And there's my answer.